Hey guys, Slink here with another tutorial and lately I've been getting a lot of questions about how I record my tutorials like the one you're watching right now because it it's actually a little bit complicated, you know? I'm talking into a microphone, I have my speakers right here and I want to be able to record my voice, the screen, my web camera and also the audio coming out of Ableton all at once and it's kind of tricky to set up. Now I know there's a lot of OBS videos out there, but a lot of them are to do with gaming and stuff like that. So if you're interested in recording two separate audio sources with OBS and you want to know how I do it specifically, then um, keep watching and we'll show you. Cool. Let's check it out. So here we are in OBS and as you can see, we've got a sort of display showing us what the recording is going to be looking like once we start recording and we are recording right now. Over on the left here is where we can set up our different scenes. These are just sort of presets on how the screen will look. So I can flip over to the Ableton scene and as you can see when I have Ableton open my face fits in this little box quite nicely, the little groove pool box which uh, isn't used too often when I'm doing tutorials. Uh, then I've got my big camera scene which is just me uh, fully expanded across the whole screen and then the dank memes scene, of course. So going back to the OBS tutorial scene that I just created, over here on the right, you can see that we have a space to add different sources. So if I wanted to add, let's say an image, you can really add anything you want, it's amazing. And we can just have this uh, wherever we like. Something is strange about OBS, it doesn't show up the different source there. So I'm just gonna flip to that scene and then come back and now you can see it there and we can turn it on and off, adjust its properties and whatnot. Let's go ahead and add a video capture device, which will be my webcam. And I've already created a webcam source. So I'm just gonna use that and there's my face. And we're recording with the webcam. Now it's a bit big, so I can just drag the corner in. And it's also got a lot of empty space on the sides. So I might just hold the Alt key and drag the sides in just like that. And we can kind of set up like a little tutorial scene here for OBS. Uh, we don't need this uh, <laughs> sausage fat now. And again, I'm just gonna flip to Ableton and then back to OBS tutorial. See, there's a webcam. We can turn it on and off, turn the main monitor on and off. So that's how the scenes and sources work. And uh, I guess I'm gonna stop the recording now and think about what I'm gonna say next. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the scene set up exactly how we want it to look, we need to talk about the audio and that's where things get a little bit more complicated and I'll do my best to explain how this all works, okay? So my goal, the dream for recording a video is to be able to click record, a single video file begins recording and built into that video file is two stereo channels. One stereo channel containing only my microphone and the other stereo channel containing only Ableton audio. And what that will allow me to do in post-production is to DS my voice without DSing the Ableton audio. And also I can balance the volumes of the two audio signals. And I don't have to worry about getting it right the first time because if my mic is too quiet, I can always boost it up. If Ableton is too loud, I can always turn it down. Okay. That's the goal. So to be able to understand what's happening with the audio in OBS, you've got to understand how I've connected everything in my studio. So I drew a little diagram here. So I have my microphone connected to my Motu Ultralight AVB on one of these inputs here. I've got the mains output connected to my speakers. And then I have another analog output, a physical cable running from the output of my Motu Ultralight AVB into the input of my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. And the reason for that is because of a limitation that I ran into when I was trying to set this up. So flipping back to OBS, we'll go into the settings page and choose the audio tab. And here is where you can select all your different audio devices that you want to record from. I've got the desktop audio disabled because I don't want to record my monitor, right? In this drop down box here, I can only select in 1 and 2 Motu or in 1 to 24 Motu. These are the only Motu options that I have. And this one records nothing. I tested it. So my only option is this. So how do you record two separate stereo audio channels 
with only one option. Well, you can't. So I had to buy another sound card and connect that, which isn't a big deal. The Focusrite Scarlett 2R2s are really reliable and they're fairly cheap compared to the Moto anyways. <laughs> so to explain this a little bit further, let me show you the Moto software. Now, obviously, whatever sound card you have will have different um, routing options, but this is the Moto Ultralight AVB software, okay? And along the top here, we can set up some auxiliary buses, like a mix bus. So I've labeled one to OBS. And I'm sending that to computer one and two. And the only thing that this mix bus is listening to is my microphone on the input here. Okay. It's uh, all in the uh, the auxiliary mixing, blah, blah, blah. I can, I can show you really quick. Yeah. So this is the mix bus for the two OBS mix bus. Okay. Everything is turned down except for the microphone. Okay. And it's getting sent to computer one and two. And that actually coincides with the one and two that you see here. So that's the microphone taken care of. This option here is only the microphone audio, and that's great. So back here into the mix buses, I have a two focus right mix bus, and that is being sent to the analog output of my Motu, and it's going into the input of the focus right. Remember, I've got the cable plugged in there, and we can actually look at the mix bus of the two focus right, and you can see everything is turned down except for the from computer one and two, and going back to the routing you can see uh from computer one and two i've actually labeled ableton main one and two and uh anyway it's it's all routed so that the only thing you can hear on this two focus right mix bus is everything except for the microphone okay so that's taken care of so now we have audio and microphone so just flipping back to obs now that we've explained how everything is connected and why i'm using two sound cards uh, we can get back into the settings of OBS. And uh, one thing that I did to make things a little bit easier for myself is I actually renamed these audio sources just so I wouldn't forget which one was which. You know, this is the microphone. That's uh, the focus right, which is recording the Ableton audio. So the fun doesn't stop there with the settings. We've got more settings to do. So let's go into advanced audio properties here. And what this window allows you to do is place each audio source onto different audio tracks. And the tracks are going to be the things that you're actually recording. And you can put multiple audio sources onto single tracks or multiple tracks. So what I've done is I've added the microphone to track one and the focus right Ableton audio to track two. And I've also added both to track six. And I'll explain why in a minute. There's also this awesome setting which lets you offset the um, audio signal so that it matches up to my lips flapping about a little bit better. <laughs> and that took a little bit of tweaking, but I feel like 50 milliseconds is a perfect delay. So going into the output, this is where we're actually going to be setting up how OBS is uh, generating files and streaming stuff. So the reason I added both the microphone and Ableton audio onto track six is so that if I wanted to stream, obviously you can only stream one audio track at a time. So I'm streaming audio track number six. I'm not sure if these stream settings are great or not, but um, this is what I've used with some success in the past. You really want this bitrate to be as high as possible without completely destroying your internet. This setting here is quite important. The higher you go, the more CPU it uses. So if you've got a badass CPU, you can probably crank this up, but my CPU is only a, a six core Intel i7. Anyways, on the recording tab, this is where some important settings need to be set up. So we need to choose where the files actually go when they're done recording. I set my recording format to MOV and I've experimented with a few different recording formats and MOV is A, one of the only formats that can handle dual stereo channels for audio. And B, I had some problems with MKVs uh, where the audio was out of sync with the video and that's never happened to me with the MOV. So I recommend using MOVs. And then here you can choose which audio tracks you want to be included in the MOV file in the end. So I've just chosen one and two and then I'm not rescaling anything. The encoder I'm using is uh, this one. I'm recording it at a lossless rate. So the files are huge. Once I've edited the video down and printed it into a finished product, the file is a little bit smaller and then I can delete the other recordings and everything like that. Cool. And then on this page, uh, I guess you can just type in the name and set the audio bit rate that you want to use. I'm just using 320. Now, if you did want to stream, uh, this is all Googleable information, but you can just choose your service, choose the server and then input your stream key. If you don't know what your stream key is, just Google it. Uh, this is pretty easy stuff. I don't even know why I'm explaining it right now. So there's one more setting that I want to show you guys that might be considered next level. All right. So as you know, I'm sitting here using Ableton and the Ableton audio is coming out of the speakers so that I can hear it so I can hear what I'm doing. 
but the microphone is also picking up that signal and I don't really want that to happen. So check this out. You can go into filters and click the plus button and add a side chain, which I've already done here. Check that out. And all you got to do is choose your ducking source, which would be the Focusrite Ableton. And then you just tweak this setting so that whenever the Focusrite Ableton audio is above negative 60 dB, you're reducing the volume of the Motu microphone by a factor of 32. Sidechain bra. <laughs> So that's pretty rad. <laughs> and uh, the purpose for this is basically so I don't have to do a lot of extra editing. The faster I can edit a video, the faster I can put it up for you guys. This is a rad little setting. This isn't a Premiere tutorial, but I just wanted to show you guys the result of all our hard work setting up these dual audio channels and the side chain and everything like that. How does that translate when we're actually using a piece of video editing software? So let's check it out. I have two video files that I created in advance here, a fake tutorial and then a fake tutorial where I'm using the side chain. So let's try the fake tutorial without the side chain first. We'll drag that in and look at that. We've got two audio channels, both stereo audio channels. I'm gonna show you how to play keyboard cat with a ridiculously loud neuro bass sound. <laughs> <laughs> if we mute the Ableton audio channel here, we can just listen to the microphone and you'll hear the problem that we're running into without the side chain sound. So look, if I wanted to edit this down before I put it on YouTube, what I would need to do is you know, right click, unlink, then I'd need to uh, you know, take a cut out of here because I don't want to hear the microphone picking up the audio from Ableton. And now we have something that's somewhat usable. If you can imagine a 20 minute tutorial where I have just multiple clips all over the place, um, it can get a little time consuming cutting this out every time. So let's take a look at this fake tutorial with the side chain. I'll drag that in. Hey guys, Link here with another tutorial that's uh, infinitely more professional and today I'm going to play a bass line on my keyboard which is coming out of my speakers but I'm going to continue talking see my voice cuts out which is actually a good thing because you don't want to hear that all at once as you can see I continued talking while I just let that bass sound rip look at that the waveform is just completely flat and we're not hearing it feeding back there is a limitation to this setup with the side chain in that I have to remember that I can't talk while I'm playing audio out of Ableton um, but that's the only drawback really okay so we spent most of the video talking about the audio and how to set that up but we didn't really talk too much about the video and my webcam as you can see my webcam is looking like straight trash right now I'll try to fix it with the settings in here. I'll just go to properties. So this is just a, a C920 Logitech webcam. They're really common. You probably have the same webcam. Um, and if you don't, I would recommend it. It's actually not too bad, even though it looks like trash right now. You might be thinking, okay, I want to turn the brightness up or something. Well, let's turn the exposure up, right? That'll make it brighter. And it does. And it actually doesn't look too bad. But if we get up to really high levels of exposure, let's say I need it to be a lot brighter, look at the frame rate. <laughs> I mean, if I move fast enough, <laughs> it looks like I'm not even moving. You're telling the shutter to be open for longer to let more light in. You're sacrificing frame rate. It looks all choppy and, and it looks like trash, essentially. So the alternative to turning the exposure up is to just turn the brightness up in your room with lights and stuff. Really, the lower you go with the exposure slider, the better your frame rate will look and the better your video will look. I've got a few lights here. I'll just turn them on. That's half of them. I have two lights over here and the other half, I have sitting on my desk so I can show you what they actually are. Now, this is not expensive equipment. This is some stuff I threw together from the hardware store. A clamp with a lamp fitting on the end of it. The on-off switch is here. Oh, God. As you can see, there's a, a double adapter so that we can have two lamps on there instead of one. Um, and that's really all there is to this setup. See? It looks awesome. You just got to turn on some extra lights. Everything's buttery smooth, and I don't know why I'm doing this in a video, but if I need to do this, it'll look pretty good because the frame rate is really high because we have that exposure slider to the left. You know, it just looks like trash without the lights. The clamps themselves were like 12 to 15 bucks, I think. The double adapters were about five bucks, and then a six pack of lights. I mean, the whole setup was like 45, 50 bucks Canadian. And this remote, by the way, this is a different product. It's basically just like wall plugs that you can plug into an outlet, and then you can turn that wall plug on and off with a switch on this remote. So I just have both those lamps plugged into one of those so I can turn them on and off with this handy remote, which is dope. So 
Now that I've sort of given you all the tips I can think of, basically explained my whole setup, I guess it's time to record a little outro video. I wanted to show you what the files look like that I'm actually uh, using for this tutorial. So what I'll do is I'll just record a video and then I'll stop it and watch it back to make sure that it's perfect. I don't wanna stumble over my words too much. I can always edit stuff out, but the less editing that I have to do, the better, the faster the video is gonna come out. So I try to just do two or three takes and then watch them back and pick my favorite one, delete the others, and then I'll give the take a little descriptive name. Like this is the intro. That's when I was talking about, you know, the visual setup, moving things around the screen. I think that's really important to do. And it's gonna make it a lot easier for me when I drag these files into Premiere to edit the video together but i really hope this video helps you out i know a lot of people are just chilling at home right now they think hey it might be a good time to get into making youtube videos a lot of my friends who are also producers have a lot of great information that they could be sharing and so i definitely encourage you guys to get started with making your own tutorial videos give me them tips man how come i'm the only one who's giving all the tips out you know <laughs> <laughs> but man, I wish someone made a tutorial like this for me to follow when I was trying to set up my stuff because it was a brutal trial and error learning curve with OBS. Things just don't work the way you think they would. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of people talking about voice meter banana, the software, which supposedly solves the issues that you have with audio, but it didn't for me. It didn't work at all. Getting a second sound card was the way forward for me. Anyways, um... So I guess we'll do the outro like this. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.